Hello everybody, today we're going to be looking at setting up a reverse proxy in Express and if you're wondering what a reverse proxy is, it's essentially a server that we set up in order to call an API endpoint and then return the result to the browser um, as if we called the API endpoint directly. Now you might be wondering why do we need to do that, why don't we just call the API endpoint directly and I've got an example here that I've set up which is just a little uh, view component um, that calls uh, an API I have found on the internet. This one is for um, public holidays uh, in Great Britain in 2020. It just returns a JSON response and I'm just printing the raw JSON response in the browser. Um, so if we copy and paste this URL into the browser, this is the result we get. Nice and simple, just a nice JSON response. Um, and that's exactly what we would expect to receive when we called it from our view app. So let's have a look at our view app and oh, we've got a network error. Um, if I refresh that, I'll just show you that is actually what is happening. And the reason we've got that is because we've got a cause issue. And so we've been blocked by this API from accessing the API directly from the browser, which is what cause is about. Um, so in order to bypass this, we want to set up our own server that calls the endpoint and returns it back and we can control cores on our own server. Um, if you're unfamiliar with cores um, and if you're a front-end developer you've probably come across it before. It's something that the browser uses um, to prevent cross-site re uh, request forgery attacks. Um, it's not really used on servers and um, it's quite complicated as to how it all works and we're not going to go into that today but just uh, it's important to know that this is something that happens in the browser but wouldn't happen um, directly from our express server or in our case our reverse proxy so let's have a look at how we can build that okay let's start by creating a new project directory and we're just going to make a directory and we all call it reverse proxy like so and then let's just change into that directory there we go and we're just going to run npm init to initialize our npm project um, that's fine for the package name, version 1.1, don't need a description. Um, none of these, these things really matter for our purposes. Uh, we're not going to bother with a repository. We don't need to worry about keywords. I'd like to just type my name in. Um, ISC license is fine. And is that all okay? Yes, it is. And so we've now initialized our package JSON and we should now be able to open that up in our IDE. Okay, as you can see, um, I've got our uh, reverse proxy project now open inside the IDE. Um, and the first thing we're obviously going to want to do is bring in Express. So npm install Express and save prod. And then just let that install. Okay, now that we've installed Express, we just want to create a new JavaScript file, which we're going to call app. And then we just want to require Express. And then just set up our app. And we're just going to create a little get root, which is And if you've used Express before, you're probably quite familiar with what I'm doing here. I'm just basically sending hello world to the browser. And then we just need to our app to listen and we'll have it listen on port 3000. So we've basically got um, a little service up there. This actually works. And all we need to do is come over to our terminal and we just need to write node app.js that should run and then if we come over to our browser and let's open up another window and it will be localhost 3000 and as you can see we've got our little hello world open so our express servers up and running the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to match the routes on our server to the routes of our api so here you can see we have public holidays 2020 GB and we're going to want to be able to say localhost 3000 and we're going to want to call that same 
uh, endpoint on our API, and then it passes that information through to the API that we're calling. At the minute, though, obviously we get um, a cannot get public holidays 2020 GB because we actually don't have a route for that. So rather than mapping every route for the API, instead we're going to use a little bit of reg a little regular expression. So let's come over here, and we can do the colon, which means we're going to start using a parameter. And that's endpoints, and our regular expression is just going to match any kind of basic uh, URL route. So um, obviously they've got forward slashes in them, um, word characters. Um, you can have a dot, and you can have a dash, and you can have them zero, or any number of times. And then what we're going to want to do is we just want to go and restart our server. So let's come over here, and I'll just close this down, and refire it back up. And if we come over here and hit refresh, you can see we've now got hello world at our root. So basically it means that our server um, is now recognizing uh, this root here. Oops, that looks like I made a typo. So I'll just type, sorry, that should be called endpoint. Uh, yep, so all that's happening there is that it matches any root and it would actually do it with anything. So it doesn't really matter what it is foo for example and it still calls that so basically we've matched any kind of get request uh, through to our proxy server and so now we just want to look at how we can get that and then make a call to the actual api endpoint um, that we're using in this uh, in this tutorial so that's this api endpoint so to make api calls i like to use axios so if we come over to the terminal and let's just open up a new window npm install Axios, save. Okay, now that's installed, we just need to come over to our app and import it. So const Axios equals require Axios, like so. And then I just have a little snippet with my IDE. So I do Axios G. As you can see, it just brings up a little bit of boilerplate because I use Axios all the time. And so we want it to call an endpoint. And for our endpoint, if we do let endpoint equals, oops, I forgot the D again, and I come over to here, our endpoint is going to be um, the base URL of the API that we're calling, so this part here. And so we want to start with that, and then we want to append our endpoint, the part that our regular expression matches. So in order to get that, we just put rec, dot params dot endpoint like so and if you notice this I've actually knocked the uh, forward slash off of this part because um, our regular expression will actually match the forward slash so you don't need to put that in there and if you do you may actually get an error um, so now we've got our axios get set up all we need to do is return it so it's a JSON response like so and then that will just be response dot data and then we can return an error just in case we get one of those, which hopefully we will not. So now we can take a look at this in the browser. So if we come over to um, our server here and then just kill it and then restart it like so, and let's go to the browser. And at the minute, our root would match foo. So obviously that's not part of our API. We actually want it to match public holidays 2020 GB. And so if I paste that in like so, and make sure the forward slash is in there and hit enter, excellent. We actually get the response and that's the JSON response. And we've now avoided that cause issue that we got at the very start. However, even though our express server can access the API, our view app still can't access our express server. And to, to show you that, I'm going to go over to our view app and I'm going to change this to localhost. So, and if I come back over to the view app, which is here, and I hit refresh, we're still getting that network error, even though we're looking at localhost 3000. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to install cores on our server. So let's go back to the terminal and we want to do npm install cores. And now that's installed, we just want to use that in our project. So const cores equals require 
cause and then we need to do app use and we use the cause function and we want to set the origin to this wild card and that basically says that our server uh, will accept requests from any other server and so we don't, don't get concerned by any kind of cause issues from any other server. Um, so now we just need to reset start our server so let's just stop that and restart it and if we come back over to the browser and hit refresh ah it works so now you can see that we've bypassed those cause issues and we're now able to access this API uh, from our front-end JavaScript code. So that's our reverse proxy set up and it took us around about 10 minutes and we could stop there but one issue that we've got is that our reverse proxy only currently works for this API because we've got this hard coded. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to remove this and put this into an as uh, set this as an environment variable and to do that we can use a package called .env so let's come over to our terminal again and npm install .env like so and now if we come back to our server we can require .env config and the config will be a new file new file called unsurprisingly .env and now we can set our API base URL environment variable to our endpoints like so and if we come back over to app we can now just get rid of that and we put in process env api base url and it's found my id has found it for us so that's there and we'll come over and we'll just restart the server like so and if I come over and refresh, you can see that it's still uh, accessing our API and we can um, just set any API, uh, any API route uh, inside our environment file. Uh, finally, we're going to actually look at a different API and I found one on the internet called the newsapi.org. And if we have a look at the format, it wants us to send our requests in. Um, it actually wants us to pass things through the uh, query string. So we might pass a queue parameter or a from parameter, a sort by parameter. And it also wants um, us to send through an API key. Uh, our current reverse proxy server isn't set up to handle parameters or send parameters through. So we're going to finish up by uh, altering our code so that it can handle this API as well as the other API that we were using. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set our API key in our environment variables file because we don't want to be passing API keys from our front end JavaScript. So if we come over to our environment variables file, we want to put in API key and I'm just going to type in API key. Um, I do have an API key, but I just don't want to display it on video. And uh, we want API key param name. And what this is going to refer to is this part here, which is the field name for the API key. Uh, for this API, it's called API key, but for a different API, it may, for example, be called key. So we just want to set that so that we can change that if we want to use our reverse proxy server for a different API. So now we've set our API key and our API key param name, we want to come over to app.js. And the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a little object called params, like so. And then we're going to want to add our environment variable. So process env, and this one will be API key param name. So set the API key param name, and we want to set that to process env API key. And once we've done that, what we can do is we can then pass that through Axios and it will build the query string for us so we don't have to do that. And so all we need to do is pass in an object and then set params to our params object. So that just refers to our params object there. Um, one of the things here though is that uh, for our other API, 
um, we didn't need to send through an API key. So we just want to check that that is actually set in our environment variables file. So we can just do if the param name is set and if the API key name is set, then add that to our params object. So we've now dealt with uh, setting our API key, um, but we haven't dealt with any of the other parameters we need to send through. So here it wants um, a field called Q and one called from, another called sort by, and one called published at. So in order to do that, we can get the parameters from our request and we can loop through them and add them to our params object up here. So to do that, we just put for, and then a nice little bit of ES6 field value. So um, of object dot entries, and that will be of our query string just mistyped, misspelled value there. And then all we then need to do is to put params field equals value. And now we've just added all of our um, query string parameters uh, to our API endpoint so that it's now going to be sent through um, from our uh, reverse proxy server. Before we can check this out in the browser, we're just going to want to update a couple of um, URLs. So the first one will be in our environment file where we've still got our old API endpoint. So let's just come over here and we're going to want to update that to our news API endpoint. That's here, like so. And then we're going to want to update our API endpoint in our view app. And that's just going to, we're still going to be calling localhost 3000, but not this public holidays endpoint. Instead, we're going to want to call um, this section here. We don't need to pass through the API key because our proxy server is handling that for us. And so we just come to here like that. And now our view app, uh, should call our news API endpoint correctly. Um, so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to restart our node server and check this out in the browser. So let's just go to our terminal, kill the server, fire it back up, and we'll go back over to our browser and our view CLI app, and let's just hit refresh and excellent. As you can see, we've now got our results from our news API. So that's our reverse proxy server setup. Um, if you want to, you can clean this code up a bit by refactoring this section into its own class, um, but I'll leave that for you to do. And if you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like on it. And if you're enjoying this channel, then please subscribe. I do appreciate it. And thanks for watching, and I shall see you next time.